What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I give my official review of Mario Strikers Battle League. Does this game match the standard that was set before it in the previous games of this series? Is this game worth the $60 value, and what things could be changed to make this game better for the future? I answer all this and more, so please stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. As I do in all my other reviews on this channel, I like to give the positives, the negatives, and then I give my official final verdict at the end of the video. But before we jump into the review, please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this style of content. And please make sure you hit that notification bell so you get updated on new videos I post as well as streams I do on the daily. First things first, we need to talk about the positive. What I really like about this game is the fact that it returns to the classic style of gameplay that made Mario Strikers so fun to begin with. If you compare this game to the other games of the series, it kind of reminds me of the GameCube original Mario Strikers game that came out very long time ago. Not saying that Mario Strikers Charge, which was on the Wii, wasn't fun. That game came out more than a decade ago, and it was so outrageous that it would be so chaotic by the end of the game. However, Mario Strikers Battle League kind of focuses on the skills that are required to do really well. For instance, it makes you understand that if you're good at doing perfect passes and shots, you're going to be really good at this game on the online play as well as in local cups. It also does is it kind of refines the mechanics so that it also adds in things like stamina and adds in things that are going to be really prioritized in your attributes for, the, for your character. And I really think that's essential in making a skill based gameplay that makes it more logical and how you win versus being over the top and picking certain maps that give you the benefit. Mario Strikers usually benefits when it sticks to the core gameplay and skill play style of play versus going with the over the topness that we've seen in previous games. The second major positive I'm gonna talk about is going to be the online multiplayer and the local multiplayer that is included in the game. What I find to be one of the best aspects of Mario Strikers Battle League is the fact that you can play online multiplayer and play it efficiently. Online multiplayer was a very rare thing to see in Mario Strikers. On the GameCube, it wasn't possible. But on the Wii in Mario Strikers Charged, it was a thing, but the efficiency was all over the place. As in, most of the time, your games ended either with someone quitting early or there being so much lag that it was not enjoyable at all. However, Mario Strikers Battle League kind of fixes those problems, and now it's extremely fun to play online matches. They introduce a thing called the Striker Club, which essentially means you create a clan, and now you're building an entire clan up by introducing new characters from online play into it. And as you play those games or ranked matches, you add more platinum coins, which you can use to upgrade your stadiums, your fields, and in some cases, your players as well. What this does is it creates a more competitive scene in Mario Strikers, which gives it a higher playability compared to what we've seen in previous installments. And the fact that this game is essentially able to play locally on split screen up to eight players total is literally outrageous and just so fun to hear. The fact is people and most game developers are tending to draw away from having a localized split screen style of gameplay, but Mario Strikers Badly does the opposite. They want you to play with people at home. They want this to be a more of a party based style of game, and I'm all for that. Nintendo's always excelled at making those party style of play, and I honestly can't wait to play this with more people. The last major positive I'll talk about is going to be the introduction of new mechanics like the equipment variants that create a lot new ways to play. Now, equipment in this game essentially is used to increase the attributes of certain players on your squads. What this does is it gives players a new way of customizations when it comes to the players that they pick. I like the fact that you can add different attributes to your player based on the different equipment that you have. In this game, you have helmets, chest plates, arm pads, boots, and each one looks different in the way that its visuals come in, but also each have a different impact on the types of attributes that are added to your captain. Now, essentially what this does is it not only gives each person a different way to customize a captain, but it also gives them a new strategic method of forming a squad. Because what you could essentially do here is that you can take a character and you can add a bunch of equipments to make them OP in certain skills, but that at the same time, 
makes them weak in certain things. So you can essentially turn Yoshi into Ronaldo or Messi by increasing his speed, shooting, passing, and his technique that curve his shots and make him as weak as humanly possible. Or you can turn a character like Toad, which essentially is supposed to be a speedster, and make him almost absolute opposite and turn him into a Bowser-like character that is super strong and then not fast at whatsoever. What this does is it gives the player so much more ability to have fun and also changes up the amount of things and possibilities you have that makes this game replayable and I'm just a fan of it. Now with the positive, definitely comes the negative. One of the biggest negatives I noticed right away is the lack of captains and stadium variants at the launch. Now right now, there are only a total of 10 captains available and these 10 captains are all the players you're going to be picking for your squads. Now, that is possibly a big shock to a lot of people because in the previous games, you normally would pick one captain and then have your list of sidekicks, which basically are mirroring to the captains in certain ways, essentially are different like characters like uh, Koopa Troopa, Goombas, Hammer Bros, Paratroopas, Birdos. These are all side characters that aren't as good as the captains but essentially kind of mirror them in the way they play. Now, this game takes away the sidekicks and adds only the captains that you can pick from. So the downside of that, it means that you're not going to get a lot of character variation. I guess that would be the reason why they add equipment so that each character could be completely different in the way that they play. Now, I would really wish they had more characters added to this game, but apparently this is a live service game, which means more characters will be added as time progresses. The other major negative here is the fact that there are a lack of stadium variants. In the online play, essentially you have the ability to pick a stadium to go with your Shrek or club. If there are 10 captains total, you would suspect that each captain would have their own stadium that goes with their character. However, in this game, there's only five stadiums you can pick from, and they're not necessarily too different. And I think that's kind of one of the bigger negatives because of the fact you're not giving it much variation to the ways you play. Now, the other major negative about this game is the fact that I feel that it's just way too easy. There are essentially gonna be two different cups you can pick from. The normal ones, which are essentially your easier, more accessible clubs for most players. And then you have your harder ranking cups that are made for those veteran players that played the game before. I don't want to chew my own horn here, but I'm pretty damn good at the game. And essentially I'm moonwalking through every single cup. Now, if I remember back to more than a decade ago when there was Mario Strikers Charged, when you're playing local clubs in that game, they were extremely difficult and they were more convoluted than having certain standings where you would get to the playoffs and then you would have to play elimination games. But this, this localized cup that they have for this game are very straight up easy. I mean, they, there's only really three rounds you have to play and essentially two round eliminations. So if you lose one game magically, you still have another chance to win and then you just you just dominate. I mean, at the end of the day, I think this is just kind of too easy for the casual player as well as the veteran. I feel like they definitely need to upgrade the difficulty here and make it so that it's not just your domination just by pressing the play button. Lastly, I wanna talk about the Striker Club upgrades as well as some of the things that they have on the online that need to be addressed. On the Striker Clubs, I thought this was a great idea. Having the ability to create a clan where you can now use ranked wins to upgrade your stadiums and characters is such a cool thing to see. But the downside is, is that it takes so many credits and points and cash to upgrade characters or the stadiums in this game that essentially it's going to be taking forever for you to do this. Unless you have a stacked club with more than 10 to 15 people added that for every win you get, you get around 100 platinum points, which you can use for purchasing. Each stadium upgrade, for the most part, if you're looking at base stadiums, is 10 grand a piece. And as you get higher in the upgrades, we're talking 50 and more and more and more. And I feel like the amount of games you need to win to get the 50k points it's just outrageous. I feel like you gotta be more manageable in how you do this. And I think that's something that not the casual player is gonna have. You're gonna have to include a lot of people in your club in order to get to that point. And that kind of just disregards those people that don't have the time to go out and go search for people to join a club or possibly join somebody else's club. You need to make this more manageable. On top of that, if you're playing online matches, if you're not in a club, you're gonna be randomized sidekicks to go along with your team member. I think the dumbest thing that happens in this online mode is that you don't have the ability to pick whichever side characters you wanna to add to your roster. It's at random, 
And sometimes some of these online matches have you going up against the two best players that they have versus you're playing against, you're on your team, you're having these horrible sidekicks that essentially aren't going to help your squad at all. Now, in my final verdict, the biggest thing I need to say about this game is that it comes with a breath of fresh air because of the fact that it comes at a time when there's not a lot of major games being dropped this year. Now, Elden Ring is a fantastic game and it was dropped a long time ago, if you really think about it, and everybody was playing it, everyone's having fun with it, but right now in the summer, there's barely any games being released and Mario Strikers Battle League is one of those games that's fun to play and I'm so glad it came out when it did. It's been more than a decade since the last installment and I really like the way that this game is going and I'm looking forward to continue playing it. There's a lot of positives and some negatives to go along with it, but overall, it's been a pretty solid game. The gameplay, in my opinion, is the best strong suit that comes with Mario Strikers Battle League. It prioritizes skill-based gameplay and has you focus on learning how to do perfect passes and perfect shooting to help you win games rather than focusing on the most outrageous methods of winning and just hitting people all across the map. This takes away the outrageous things that cause people to lose their minds when they lose matches out of nowhere and really prioritizes and gives benefit to those people that learn how to play the game effectively and it shows. Online and local multiplayer, in my opinion, was so well done in this game and I like the fact that you can play with eight people locally and this new introduction of ranked system as well as the striker club was a great idea and I'm looking forward to them adding more to it. The new mechanics like the equipment really give the player the ability to pick and choose new ways to customize their character as well as a new strategic method of organizing a squad for any online or localized games. Unfortunately, the downside is that there's only 10 players to pick from as well as a lack of stadium variability, which means that there's not going to be a lot of content at launch, but it seems like they're going to be adding this as time progresses. In some cases, the game is way too easy to win, especially on the local tournaments, which feels like it's a little boring at times if you're just moonwalking through everything, and I think they need to really adjust that difficulty rating. Striker clubs are a great idea, but they definitely need to make some upgrades or updates to fix the store and how the online system works. Overall, I'm giving this game an 8.3 out of 10. I think it's a pretty solid game, and I believe it's a great game to play, and it's absolutely worth the $60 price tag. I had a lot of fun with the game so far, and I've been playing it in the unranked setting, and once that rank system comes out, you know your boy is going to be playing that all the time, getting my Shrekker Club to the top of the ranking system. But be aware that this is a live service game, so essentially it's going to have a lack of content at start, and as time progresses, more and more things will be added to the game, which will be more beneficial. I can see that this game going to the 9.0 ranking if it does the right things and its updates. I had a lot of fun with the game, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they add for the future. Thank you everyone for watching. Please make sure if you haven't done so, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media on Discord and Twitter, and that is located in the description below. Until next time, this is Mars Band from Mars Band Gaming, signing off for the night. Peace out, guys.